Hey, I'm going to show you how to use the Gutenberg animation block. So we can add that block from the common blocks. I'm going to get this little indicator right here that this is an animation block. So this block can accept any other blocks uh, to be put inside of it. So we'll go ahead and we'll add an image. So now we've got something inside of here. Click here get back to the settings of the block. If you can't see this, we need to enable it. So here we've got the options from the animate.css library. So we can add an animation, give it a delay, and adjust its speed. So this will run when the user scrolls over it on the front end of your website. So if we preview that, got a little bit of delay here and then it'll happen. A um, couple other options here is we've got a reset. So what that's going to do is every time the user scrolls back to that element or a group of elements, we'll get it. Another nice feature about Gutenberg and the internal blocks is if we do add something outside of the block, we can drag it inside. Now it's inside of our animation block. One other thing is I've set up this post right here. Sometimes you can run into an issue where animations don't quite look right. Because of stacking. So if we preview this one, see how that one's sliding in under. And the way this works is anytime there's one element following another, the one that's lower is going to have a higher stacking order. But we can adjust that with Z indexing. So if we give this one a little bit higher Z index. You don't have to go quite that high. We can just do 10. And little tip, if you find it hard to select the block, you've got a navigator right here. So now if we run that, we'll see it animates over the other one because we adjusted the stacking order. So that's really it. Pretty simple plugin. And yeah, hopefully it works for you.